So that's in Algebra 2, Lesson 14. Oh, here we meet again with our old friend, the equation of a line. I mean, we have been through the war with this guy and still he keeps coming back for more, right? It's fine. We'll be fine. This time, we are specifically talking about finding the equation of a line when given... two pairs of points. Okay, so we're not looking at a graph. We're going to be given two pairs of points and we're going to figure out how to turn that into the equation of a line. We want to end up with this, right? Remember, this is the equation of a line in what we like to call slope intercept form because we know that M gives us a slope and B gives us the intercept. So that's why it's called slope intercept form. So clever, right? These mathematicians, they get up early in the morning to come up with this stuff, you guys. It's just crazy cool. Okay, so th this type of problem is fun because even though it's equation of a line, we don't have to graph a gosh darn thing. What we're always going to be given is two pairs of points that look like this, right? And we can write any numbers in there, but what we want to do is just think of them as x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. Don't let the little sub subscripts freak you out. It's just a way of saying this is one point and that's the other point. They each have an x and a y. We want to keep track of this x versus that x. So this is just a little tool we use for doing that. And here comes the tool that we're going to use when we're given two pairs of points and we want to find our slope. Copy all that. Right? This is called slope formula, very close in name to slope intercept form so that you just have to like wrap your head around it. This only says slope because this is a formula that we can use to calculate the slope when given two pairs of points. Notice that these are the same for numbers, if you will. They're the same for things as we have here. So we'll look at an example and this will all make lovely perfect sense to you. Uh, but I'm going to flip my page, so I'm going to recopy this right away. Over here. And I said, I said my form of the line equals y equals mx plus b. And then my, that's my slope intercept form. And then my slope formula is this. Notice that there are minus signs in the formula. That is always a really strong clue that we had Darn well better use buckets because otherwise we'll make an unholy mess. Okay, 14. Yes, that's what lesson this is. Point one. John says, <clears throat> find the equation of the line that passes through, and then he gives us two pairs of points. Minus 3, 2, and 3, minus 3. Okay, so step one. is find the slope. We're gonna use that cute little formula. So all we have to do is plug these values into this. But how do we know which pair of points to call x1 and y1 and which pair to call x2 and y2? Remember how I said we had two pairs of points that look like this? That's the comma, by the way. How do we know which pair should be the ones and which pair should be the twos? Spoilers, it doesn't matter. As long as we call both of these guys the same number, right? Because the number represents which pair they are. As long as we get the numbers right. Like if I call this X1 and this Y1, that would be a problem because I have to choose the partners. But it doesn't matter. So what I do is I usually just go in order and I always write this down because as you can see, 
the order of this is very different than the order of this. And if I don't write those down, but just try to remember it in my head, I make lots of little stupid mistakes. And no one likes that. I am bucketing my formula because I see minuses here and I see minuses there and I know that's a great way to make a mistake. Okay, the first number I need is y2. There it is, it's negative three. The second number I need is y1. There it is. Now I need x2 and then I need x1. This is a great example of how useful it is to label these because we have three threes, two are negative, one is positive. We could make such a mess of this so easily. And who knows, maybe I even did. But um, it would be very easy to really screw this up. All right, so now all we have to do is simplify this. Minus three minus two, minus five. And then this becomes a plus, right? Six. So I see that my value for m I'm gonna write it right here, m equals, now remember the way we like to write this is we like to float that minus sign, minus five over six, like so. This isn't wrong, this just looks a little neater. I underline this because it's part of my answer but I'm not done yet. We're ready for step two. All right, now what we're gonna do, we still have to find the y-intercept, right? In order to write the equation of the line, we need to find the m and the b. We've already found the m. Now what we can do is we can take this equation, we can plug in the m, which we know, and we can choose either pair of points and use them for the x and the y. That will fill three of the four holes and we'll be able to solve for b. Huh, cool, right? Now, here's the thing. How do you know which pair of points to choose to plug in for step two? It doesn't matter. It should work out either way. Um, so you can choose whichever pair you think will be easier to work with. I'm just gonna choose the first pair this time, but trust me, it'll work out either way, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up. Y two equals m times x, okay, m is minus five over six, times x, I'm using the first pair, so that's minus three, plus b, okay? So we've plugged in one of the pairs of points and the slope, which we just calculated. Cool, right? All right, so now I'm ready to swim some fish. Here's my b, so I'm gonna have to subtract this over to the left side. This is a bit of a mess, isn't it? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel this three against this six. That'll make this a two and this a one. Oh, I like that. This pair of minus signs turns it into a plus, doesn't it? So this can be simplified as five over two, which means that what I need to do is subtract let me just write it over again so you can see it more clearly. Clearly, Now I have um, two equals five over two plus B, right? I reduced all of that and made it nice and cute and clean. And now I shall subtract five over two from both sides. Now this two is gonna need a denominator of a two, won't it, Be so that I can actually subtract them. So I'll multiply top and bottom by two and I'll get four over two. This cancels, four over two minus five over two equals B, so that means, I'll write it here, B equals minus one half. Now I, meant, I should have said this earlier, but I'll say it now. Don't let these fractions bother you, it's fine. That we're not gonna graph them or anything like that, so you don't really have to worry about it. So our final answer is to take these two pieces and write y equals minus five, six, x minus one half. I put my minus sign too close to the five. I wish I had floated it more like that, but that's still the right answer. Yay. 
okay? No graphing anywhere in sight. No little charts of numbers. Hallelujah, we're past all that. We are going to do one more problem and then we will be done with lesson 14. So fast. And I'm not gonna say easy, but straightforward, I, I will say that. Example 14.2. Find the equation of the line that passes through negative 4, 7, and has a slope of minus 3 over 5. Wait a minute, John. Where are the two pairs of points? He's not giving us two pairs of points. So how can we use this thing, right? I'm going to write it out one more time. Because I know you're copying everything I'm writing, so you're writing it too. How can we use this if we don't have two pairs of points? Well, John is feeling kind because what he's saying is, forget it, I'm not even going to ask you to use that. I'm just going to tell you that's your slope. So step one is done for you. I already told you what M is. Holy smokes. So now all we have to do is just the step two where we solve for B, right? And remember the way that we do that is we're gonna plug, um, let me write this, Y equals MX plus B, right? We're gonna, John told us what our slope is, so we'll put that in there. And he gave us one pair of points, so that's the X and that's the Y, right? We'll plug these three in and we'll solve for B. So we only are doing half a problem. I mean, okay, right? So 7 equals, 7 is y, m, which is minus 3 over 5. Oh, see, sometimes I don't float it. Sometimes I write it up top. I wonder why. I don't want to do that. Times minus 4 plus b. Actually, I do know why I do it, because now when I multiply, I'll take care of the minus sign. This becomes positive 12 over 5. So I'm going to write it like that. Now we subtract 12 over 5 to isolate our B. I have to fix this to turn it into a fraction. I want it over five, so I'll multiply it by five times five, five over five rather, so it becomes 35 over five. Does that make sense? And now this cancels. 35 minus 12 is what, 23 over five equals B. That's a disgusting number, but again, all we have to do is write it down. It's not that big of a deal. So for our final answer, we write Y equals minus three over five X plus, because it's positive, 23 over five. Guess what? We got it right. Thank goodness. Okay, so sometimes John just gives us fabulously easy little versions of this, um, and we take it with a smile, all right? You, we can do it. If he gives us two pairs of points, we can find the slope ourselves and then do the B, but in this case, he only gave us one pair of points, but he just he gave us the slope, so okay, fine. Guess what? We're done. Lesson 14 is complete. Thank you. Goodbye.